I haven't left the house in six months. I actually started quarantining before March. Uh, I was watching it from China and I said, as soon as it hits our county, anything at all, we're, we're staying in. I'd like to demonstrate for you some of the masks that I use. Uh, the face shield isn't really a protective if you're going into your work or you're going to be around people. Just reinforce my PPE. Just really make sure it doesn't. These are usually very well made. I'm sure this is just a fluke. So I'm gonna just, uh, there we go. Duct tape. Good as new. So as I was saying, I'd like to demonstrate for you some safety measures that I've been taking. Since January, I started to just really stock up. I can show you some really basic PPE. Now, if your family has not been 100% quarantined for the last six months, then you probably want to wear a face shield inside your house. Now, if you're like me, then <laughs> you add the very appropriate additional mask. Now, this, of course, oh, this, of course, is also necessary during intimate relations with your partner, especially if your partner has done any pickup, curbside, uh, walking and checking the mail. The mail could be contaminated. So let's talk about that. Wow, this is really... One thing you gotta learn is that the virus can live on... Okay, just, just kidding. The virus can live on cardboard for up to 24 hours. It can live on copper for four hours. It can suspend in the air for 65 million hours, especially if you're in Florida or Texas. I had to disinfect my phone because I just walked outside yesterday. I would like to demonstrate a few more things for you. For example, checking the mail. You're gonna have to have your shield and of course your mask. Now, this is not a triple layer. So what I can do, if I wanna be extra safe, is I can just take a very comfy cotton mask that I cut out of a sock, and then I can add a layer here and put that there. If you really, really, really are going in, you're in a risk situation, you can just go ahead and you can just apply the third mask. So now you know you have an actual triple layer. And then if you're going to a hospital, I suggest Definitely adding the gloves. This is okay for checking the mail too, especially if you have neighbors like mine that refuse to mask up when they walk out the door. Ow. That's not necessary right now, of course, because I just disinfected my phone and I'm not in the same physical room with any of my family. I'm safe. When you approach the mailbox, you have to make sure that you have your, your masks on hand in case someone approaches you Within the 13 foot radius, it's really more than six. And if anyone's been in that physical area around the mailbox within the last 16 hours, then you really have to have those masks, face shield for your eyes. Sunglasses don't cut it. You, you really need to let people know what we're doing here. And so then when you get the mail, what I do is I take a grocery bag, I go with a partner, okay? I go with a partner, my husband, and I hold the bag and he has the gloves and the keys and he drops the mail in then he immediately does the lab style safety removal of the gloves. Now I'm only touching the inside. You put it in a bag with the mail. We only check the mail on Sundays. Again, paper, 24 hours, Sundays no mail. Then we let it sit and decompress on our decontamination station. I'm going in the other room. I'm gonna go ahead and mask up because my family doesn't stay inside. I'm gonna go in the other room now. We're gonna show you the decontamination station. 
is an extremely sanitary area with, of course, the shoes that we wear outside. This is where we put our decontamination mail. Oh my! Hold on. <gasps> Watch. Oh, dang it. duct tape fix isn't holding in. Now my eyes are unprotected and I accidentally touched the soap before my hand was disinfected. So now I'm going to rinse the soap bottle with the same hot water that I washed my hands with. Yes! Dang it! Ugh! And then of course I can rewash my hands so that now my hands and the soap dispenser are clean. Turning it off with the elbow and now, now we're saving time. Oh, stay away! More than 16 feet, please! <sighs> Kids, potential vectors for the disease. So if they live in your house with you and they're in school, you definitely, definitely have to wear your mask and your face shield at all times. Now that you know how to check your meal and decontaminate your meal, and then sanitize, well protected, and of course in your house be protected. I like to explain to you that when you open your mail, you're gonna of course again, put on a fresh pair of gloves, and then you're going to carefully open your mail, throw all the junk mail in the garbage, and again, do the lab safety glove removal. But only after it's decompressed for 24 hours after you check the physical mail because you don't know which ones were delivered on Saturday, and so they could actually still have active virus RNA is you have to wait 24 hours past the mail delivery time on Saturday to check it on Sunday. Now, deliveries, deliveries are a little different, but it's important that you let the cardboard boxes sit outside in the rain or the sun for at least, again, 24 hours. Lucky for us, we're in a pretty nice neighborhood so people won't steal our stuff. Oh, goodness. Catch my breath. And then of course, this one time, I actually had to go into the grocery store. That has only happened once, tw twice in the last six months. That was at a time when things were much more difficult and my grocery deliveries weren't working. So let me give you some pointers on grocery delivery. If you use Shipt or Instacart, you're gonna be paying more for each item than what they actually would cost in the store. Also, they don't always update their inventory very quickly. So what I started doing is I really bought into the system. We already had Amazon Prime, so we order our groceries from Whole Foods. For about six months now, we've been ordering delivery, but there was a time when it was very difficult, and we found that Whole Foods didn't let us down. I don't see anyone outside in their other yards, so I think I'm okay. Once you get used to ordering all your deliveries in, and your job is inevitably remote because <laughs> who isn't? And you never actually have to leave your house. There's a few things that you need to remember. Cars need to be driven. So you gotta get out and drive it around sometimes. I do encourage you to wear your mask and your face shield at all times in your car. Why? Um, well, what happens to me is we'll order delivery and a delivery person will walk by the car and they might touch it, they might breathe on it, and then when I come to touch the car, I could have germs on my hand that I then take into the vehicle. And then those germs will aerosolize off of my hands. And then of course, potentially breed them in. So that's why we have to do that. But once you get the delivery thing going, you have to consider you never, never answer the door. It's very, very, very beneficial to have a door with a glass window so that you can just wave at them through the glass. Of course, yet again, with your mask and your face shield on, just because it's not an airtight seal. I have found that by never leaving the front door, I don't get bothered by inevitable wasps' nests that build up. It encourages them to leave faster. They drop it and they go. In the meantime, if they wanna be annoying and ask me for an ID, approach the glass with your protection on. But remember, wasp nests are your friends. They keep delivery people out of your area, unless you've been able to silicon shut all of the cracks. The things that I like to do is keep my sanitary PPE go bag when I leave the house. When you do go in your car, 
and you're all masked up, goggled up, face shielded up, gloved up while you're driving your car, all you have to do is just sit your go bag on the floor of the car and it's right there ready for you to grab up fresh PPE. These have totally been in the Ziploc bag. They're totally sanitary. I take one, I throw it away. Got my nitrile gloves, additional face shields for all the family, my bag of fabric masks, which I keep in the bag because the, okay, well, yeah, that's, all right, yep, and then the, okay, well, okay, let's just put that, I'm sure it's, it's fine. You gotta have goggles. See, these provide a more airtight seal around your eyes. Way better than sunglasses. Now, if you're really with it, and you absolutely have to go into the store, I highly suggest the goggles. The face shield, let's demonstrate, shall we? So we have the goggles that are going to protect our eyes with an airtight seal. I had these left over from chemistry class. You've got our face shield that's broken. We'll use another one. Okay. Yep. Oh, oh. Yeah. They're fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sticking together. Okay. Here we go. This one will work. It's so good that we have our COVID proof duct tape. Like I said, high quality here, really high quality. It's important to just buy a new set of face shields every week, because here's the thing, it can live on plastic for five days. Ugh. Okay, now, our eyes are protected from aerosol, our face is protected from droplets, oh no, can't use that, that's contaminated. Never, ever, ever reuse a mask. Once you touch it, it's over. Let's get a new one. And we're gonna go here. We're just gonna apply that like this. And then, yep. Now you're ready to go in the store. Wait, of course, don't forget your gloves. This is the thing. There are people that will go to the store and they will not wear a mask. They will claim that they have some sort of medical condition, anxiety, <laughs> or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Give me a break. Those people are your enemies. You need to give them dirty looks when you see them. Don't assume that they have a medical condition. Just give them a dirty look. It might even be worth taking off the surgical mask. But if you did, of course, you'd get infected. Everyone that doesn't wear them is a potential source of infection. See, the fact that this disease can be spread asymptomatically is exactly why you have to assume that everyone is infected. I've heard the statistics. I understand that it's more protective for you for me to cover up than it is for me. That's why I don't really leave the house. And if I do leave the house, I'm as protected as possible. I don't wear a mask when I can't social distance. That's ridiculous. I wear a mask as soon as I walk out the door because the anti-maskers might spit on me. It happened here, locally. Woman spit on cancer patient with mask on video. Now, I'll tell you what I really want, okay? I really, really want one of those full head bird beak masks like they wore in the plague. Why? Well, the bird beak keeps it away from your face and it's made all of, I believe, leather, which is really cool. And it makes you look extremely scary. When you look extremely scary, then the anti-maskers aren't really thinking, <gasps> They wear a mask, I'm gonna spit on them, I'm gonna infect them with my secret COVID. No, they think, ooh, that's a scary plague doctor, I'm gonna run. And that is even extra protection. When you leave the house, full PPE. When you're in within 15 feet indoors of your family, you probably do need at least a face shield. But to be honest, like it doesn't hurt to just completely cover your face all the time. Um, it's important not to touch your face, you know, a lot. You don't wanna get germs in your, your nose or your eyes. Of course, when your face shield is really secure and it's well made, that's not gonna be a problem. When your mask is comfortable and you live in Florida where it's 100 degrees and 79% humidity, also totally not a problem. So remember guys, we're all in this together.